The following program is a specialty program. Unless otherwise identified, the participants on the program are not employees of Chorus Entertainment. Opinions expressed may not necessarily reflect the views and policies of Global News Radio 640 Toronto. Welcome to the Pinpoint Health Show, Global News Radio. Yeah, phone lines, look at that, already open. We're going to get it happening if you have any uh, issues. You want to talk about uh, maybe calling in for the benefit of a friend or a family member, colleague, no problem, 416-870-6400, pinpointhealth.ca. The clinics are open, they're functioning, and they're helping people. So you can go to the website, find one near you, contact Dr. Lou, and uh, start getting on the road to being a better person in the uh, first half of 2021. I know we're still struggling with this whole pandemic thing, but uh, keeping your health and keeping taps on your health, there's no reason why you should let that uh, go by the wayside. You can keep track of things and stay healthy. You go to the dentist, get your uh, physio, your musculoskeletal problems. Dr. Lou and his crew are there to uh, to help. So don't hesitate. Again, 416-870-6400. Live call-in show here. It is uh, just after 11 o'clock on a Saturday morning, so bring it on. We'd, uh, we'd love to talk to you. How are you, pal? What's going on? All right there. He's getting a coffee. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey, there you are. <laughs> hey, John. I'm here. Sorry, here, technology. We keep uh, we keep this stuff from home. Uh, yeah. Always get a, a bit of an issue. Anyways, I'm here. I am here. Um, Beautiful. Things are well. How are you? Good, man. What's uh, what's uh, what's up? I just said, uh, you know, everyone bring on their phone calls. So as we wait to line up a few already, what's uh, what do you want to start with this morning? Yeah, I think, I mean, one of the sort of uh, key things that we've spoken about over the years, which is very much, you know, I don't want to say only the only bread and butter, but a main thing of what we see is is low back pain. Um, and, and it's a big thing. And, and, you know, I bring it up because the other day with um, the snowfall that happened, in some areas, it was a little bit wet, so it was somewhat heavy. Um, yeah. There was a significant amount of, of low back pain cases that have come in. I've also been getting quite a few calls. Um, and it's really interesting, right? Because you back pain is one of those things where you could do something the wrong way. And, you know, like you exert yourself like shoveling the snow and you hurt your back. But at the same time, you could also do nothing and you hurt your back. And so we see yes. this consistently where people say, well, I don't do anything. I just sit and, and, and my back is killing me. And then at the same time, you see people who will say, well, I, I do physical labor for a living and my back hurts. And so it's, it's this tremendous thing that affects, you know, 80% of the population at any given time. And that's across the world. That's not, and it doesn't matter male versus female, socioeconomic status, whatever it is, it seems to be very much a weak point. Um, in in what what we are are essentially as human beings and their day and with the winter months and in the winter months um uh, that has been uh essentially something that we've seen come up uh significantly is is the is the incidence of low back pain and so you know i think there's a call waiting because i have the call screen open here and before i go into a rant about low back pain let's take that call you got it. Excellent plan, Steve. Thanks for uh, standing by. Good morning. How are you, pal? Good morning. Thank you for taking my call. You guys run a, you a perfect show. Thank you for the information you shared. Thanks, man. Uh, but, Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I'm calling on my wife's uh, behalf. She's been lately diagnosed with bursitis in her left leg, and the pain is shooting down to her calf and down to her foot, uh, and the knee hurts a little bit, and she's been having a hard time getting out of bed in the morning. Uh, we're just wondering, is there anything that uh, the doctor can recommend for her if, if it's in diagnosis that we can follow up or even any therapy that she may require? Yeah, so so my first question would be, who diagnosed her with bursitis? It was her family doctor. Uh, she she had an x-ray and, and, um, and an ultrasound, and uh, he suspected bursitis. There's a bit of a lump on the back of the knee there, like it, it, it looks swollen. Yeah. Yeah, so typically bursitis is actually very well localized. So once you get into pain going up or down and in different areas, um, I would consider a different possibility. Bursitis is also one of those things that you can't diagnose based on an ultrasound and x-ray. It's sort of um, something that you have to do some physical testing on. So, I, I mean, it could very well be that. It's, it's always hard for me to say um, on the radio, but just hearing the symptoms that you're describing uh, makes me wonder if it's if the diagnosis at this point should be revisited and then determining what the right diagnosis is. Now, the one thing you're sort of saying in terms of treatment, the one thing that I sort of always say, and it's a catchphrase of mine, I guess, to some extent, is that physical problems need physical intervention. 
you know, 98% of the time, let's call it. Um, so I, I definitely do think her seeing someone that sort of specializes in, in that in that realm is, is probably going to be helpful in terms of therapy because, again, th- the biggest thing here being, though, is what is the diagnosis? What is what's causing the problem? Once you know what's causing the problem, you can treat it, right? Like if, if there's a bit of a lump at the back, could there be some swelling? Is that putting pressure on the nerve? Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that, that you'd have to sort of rule out um, in order to get to a proper diagnosis. So, um, you know, in terms of what has she done so far to manage this? Uh, they just gave her uh, anti-inflammatory drugs and uh, just a uh, uh, an ointment to put on top to uh, kind of numb the pain. Yeah. Bit, but, uh, aside from yeah, that, and, yeah, and and that's in in my opinion the wrong approach. Again, physical problems need a physical intervention, um, and and th- that often is much better. Not not to say that medication and things don't play a role, but you know the research would support that they play a role in conjunction. But it shouldn't be just medication for for that type of thing uh, I, even I, if it is bursitis i agree with that like i said it just seems to be like a temporary solution so with the, is this something your clinic can be uh yeah uh, yeah of course yeah where are you calling from we come from lindsay ontario uh we live in lindsay, okay ontario. We'll uh, let uh, uh give us a call or i'll have someone call you on monday and, and we'll see if we can get you set up with somebody to get some treatment so do you want me to call your milton office or which one you do it doesn't matter. You can call the general number and we'll sort of see where where the closest place is um, to you, or I'll get someone to call you on Monday. Great. Thank you so much, Doctor. I appreciate your help. No problem. No Thanks, problem. Dave. Appreciate it, pal. And uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. one 855 doctor Lou D-R-L-O-U. one 855 doctor Lou is the way to reach out. Info at pinpointhealth.ca. Steve is a good way to... Uh, to attack that as well. We still got uh, lots of time. Just getting rolling here. 416-870-6400. Yeah, back to the old lower back. I'm all too familiar with that. Man, oh, man. Yeah. I'm telling you, especially this well, time of year. And, you know, Steve's point, actually, although we were talking about sort of a leg problem, ties in nicely with where I was going to go with the low back. And, and really what I was going to say is, you know, oftentimes people will go see a professional um, and you know, they, they go there and they have low back pain. And by the time they left, it's like, well, what did they say you have? And it's like, well, they told me I have low back pain. And it's like, well, you walked in knowing that, right? Pain is not the diagnosis, right? Low back pain is not the diagnosis. And that goes to the point that I was making to Steve about his wife. It, the, the first step in any low back pain presentation is what is the underlying source of the problem? Now there is such thing as a diagnosis that we call mechanical low back pain, which essentially tells us that, but that mechanical component is the is the important key there. It tells us that the mechanics of the back, the function, the, the joints, the muscles are creating something. A lot of the times it's just due to deconditioning. And the good news here is that 90% of people with low back pain probably have mechanical low back, which is a good thing because you can treat that with conservative interventions, mainly therapy, physical therapy, and and rehabilitation exercises. You know, in 5% of cases, maybe a little bit more, you might get more serious problems like, say, disc herniations, stenosis, and all these other things. And then in a very, very small percentage of people, you know, less than probably 2%, you can have actually some very bad things, tumors, uh, multiple uh, MS, multiple sclerosis, other things. But the good news is the vast majority of back pain is not bad news. And, and that's oftentimes what people are, are worried about. But, you know, the big thing here comes in, in what I'm trying to say is when you have the right diagnosis, that's what's going to make sure that we deliver the right treatment. And that's something that I too often see is done wrong, where people just jump to a diagnosis because, let's say, it's most likely. And that's an easy thing to do. Uh, and sort of the call that we just had is sort of an example of that, where you just jump to a diagnosis that's simplest and, and, you know, it's easy, but it's wrong. And then when it's wrong, the intervention that you're using for that diagnosis isn't getting the person better. And the time that they're not doing anything is likely making them worse as well. And that's not a good thing. 416-870-6400. Still got a couple minutes here till we uh, take a break. So we'll get to Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Thank you for patiently standing by. How are you? You're welcome. Thank you. I'm good. Um, hello, Dr. Lou. Hello. Um, hello. Hi. Um, I, I'm not going to keep you. I've been dealing with a back pain since 2013. I hurt my back with a client. I'm a PSW, but my mistake was mm-hmm. I didn't wish 
I didn't report it because I thought I was going to be okay. But now it's really, really bad where I can get out of bed at times. It would help me. It would hurt me for like one or two weeks straight. Um, when it's hurting, I can't even walk. It would go down on my legs. So now my doctor recently they did um, some tests for me, like um, ultrasound and stuff. They said I have a bulging yeah. disc. I On ultrasound know. or MRI? Um, I think they did MRI too, yes. <laughs> Sorry. I, okay, I think it's they okay. did that, that scan and everything. They did everything. And they said it's a bulging disc. They give me only like pills. It was like Lyrica. They don't help. Anything I think yeah. don't help. Yeah, I, yeah. It's really, yeah. really crazy. Sometimes I... It's hurting. I feel like, you know what, my kids have to help me put my shoes on. Like recently, I went to a client. They have to lend me a cane to work because I couldn't work, do anything. So now, I do, don't know. Do you, have pain go, do you have pain going down your leg? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, this is, this is number one, um, there's a lot of people that I've seen over the years that are either PSWs, or nurses working in either, you know, working with people, especially when, when people are sick and you have to move them around. And this is something that I see a tremendous amount of. And, and, it's, and it really does hit your industry very hard uh, in terms of having to care for people and move them around. Um, and so, unfortunately, you're not a unique uh, situation. I think it happens all too often. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, I mean, one of the big things here is, is again, is sort of what I was saying to the previous caller, physical problems all, often need a physical intervention. The, you know, there's a lot here that for me to sort of take apart. You know, number one, just because it, an image says something, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the diagnosis. You've got to correlate physical findings with imaging findings to come up with the diagnosis. I guess we're going to break, John. Let's let's. Tackle this yeah, Michelle. Break. Yeah, just hang on, Michelle. We'll get to you in uh, in just a sec. Don't go anywhere. So we'll uh, we'll do that and follow up. In the meantime, four one six eight seven zero sixty four hundred is the way to call through. It's eleven seventeen. Just getting warmed up here. Pinpoint Health Show, Global News Radio. Welcome back. Eleven twenty here. Pinpoint Health Show. Four one six eight seven zero sixty four hundred for your calls. You have questions? Bring them on. Get some answers here from Doctor Lou. That's why we do the show live. Every Saturday, Michelle. Thank you for uh, for hanging on. Appreciate that. Go ahead, Doctor Lou. Sorry, Bill. I had a break there. Yeah, it's okay. yeah sure. So, thanks, Michelle. So, what I was saying before uh, mm -hmm. we went to break was essentially, you know, you've got to have a good physical exam at this point, which which takes into consideration the findings that you have on imaging, and based on those findings, you have to come up with a plan. Now, based on what you've said to me it sounds like there, there might very well be a disc issue that's creating your problem the yes. the difficult thing here is that things like bending and twisting which is part of probably you know 70 percent of your job is going to be an aggravating factor and is going to likely make you worse um and this is why when these types of things happen you know, I know you said you never really brought it up when it initially happened, but time off in those circumstances is really important in terms of modified duties and work hardening, getting people back to where they were prior. Um, it, it's not too late for you. It could take some time, but really I think what you need now is, is proper investigation and coming up with a proper plan of management because it sounds like that's missing right now. Yeah, okay, but my job now, my doctor sent me, you know, they don't send me to any client where I have to push to oh. pull in bed. Because I can't even stretch myself sometimes, but still, yeah. it's still hurting. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Well, and, and that's how I started the show, saying you can have a very physical job and have back pain, and then you can also have a very sedentary job where you're sitting and still have back pain. The 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 important thing here is is building your back back up, um, for lack of a better term, and and that will take a little bit of time, but it's not impossible. Yeah, I think I hurt myself more because sometimes they would send me to a client when I have the client in bed and I'm like, I'm already here. I don't want to leave that client without getting washed and eat. I'm going to do it. So I get to a point right now when I get to a client, I always tell them no bed weddings. But when I get there now, I have to call them, can you send somebody else? And if they don't, I, they don't have anybody I have to help because certain ways you find right. a client, you're like, no, I can't leave that client. I have to help. So that's my right. problem. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll have someone give you a call on Monday, and, and we'll see if we can do anything to help you. 
Michelle, appreciate the call and your time. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. 416-870-6400. That is the number to call in just like that. Frank, thanks for uh, thanks for hanging on. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys today? Good, sir. What's, Hi, uh, what's on your mind? Dr. Lou, um, so I had a torn ACL about uh, 20 years ago, and I've actually been okay. able to cope pretty well with it, no surgery whatsoever. And yep. um, just about four months ago, I went to a, a physio session, and uh, the physiotherapist did something. And since then, I've actually been in a lot of pain. So we've tried uh, shockwave, we've tried laser therapy, and it all seems to, uh, to make it worse. But the pain is not in my knee. It's actually in my calf and on my thigh. So the BMO is what's right. the issue. Um, what's my long-term prognosis here in terms of living with open ACL for the longer term? I'm in my 50s right now. So this is yeah. Yeah, so, so the important thing here is that a lot of times people think that their previous injury or whatever it was is the same thing that's creating the problem today. Um, and that may not necessarily be the case, or it may be, or it may be making the current situation worse. There's a lot of things to consider there. Um, in terms of being in the leg and the calf, and you said vastus medialis, VMO, that doesn't right off the top make sense for me. Um, so again, this goes back to sort of the... I, I guess what the theme of the show thus far has been is that getting the proper diagnosis. Now, I guess the question that I would ask you is you said you were otherwise fine and you went for a physio session and then you got worse. Why did you initially go for that physio session? I, I, that was interesting, actually. I went there for my elbow because I had a tennis elbow. And the okay. said he wanted to look at my knee just out of curiosity. But in that process, he actually jerked it a few times. I believe there's a kind of you do. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, yeah, there, there's there's a lot I can go on this, right? Like if, if someone comes in with an elbow issue and their knee is otherwise fine, I'm not really sure why you're looking at it. Now, it is important to go through people's past um, injuries, and I often will do that. Um, but if, if, the, if it's fine now, and usually that's my question, has it recovered? Are you, are you feeling okay? And if the answer is yes, uh, you know, I, I'm not really sure. So I don't know if something else was hurt or or, or whatnot at that point. I, I can't comment on that. Um, right. But, you know, that, that's a very interesting chain of events, uh, to say the least. And, and you know, I'm, you know, now you're facing a problem and, and it really comes down to, again, figuring out exactly what the cause of that problem is. Like, again, you said vastus medialis. To me, that doesn't make sense. Um, okay. especially if it's in your calf, considering the vastus medialis is on the front of your leg. It's on, on the quads, not, not in your calf. Um, right. So, you know, that, that is essentially, you know, to me when I hear things like that, that's where I start to get concerned and sort of, again, you know, a few of the other callers where they're just being told things because they're common. Just because they're common doesn't mean that that's what you have going on. Um, and, and I think it really is important that you get um, individually, like, looked at from from that perspective to figure out exactly what's going wrong and, and would that be a physical exam or would i need a, an mri then to uh to confirm what's happening here you know one thing that i can tell you is that physical problems often require a good physical exam to start uh, a lot of the times the the imaging component or any other testing is really meant to confirm or deny sort of what your suspicion is like you know when we've had knee surgeons who operate on the knee on this show prior, when you ask them, they usually say, well, I would rather have a, my physical exam in order to make me figure out what's going on than, than the MRI. They only will typically send for the MRIs and things like that. Like if you know you're doing surgery and you want to have a look first, but it's the physical exam is the key component of physical health. Okay, okay. And just my, my second question, uh, it was long-term prognosis without an ACL. Um, is that a common um, occurrence out there? Well, you, 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 you said you're 50, right, or in your 50s, and when did you tear your ACL? 20 years ago. 20 years ago. So the long-term prognosis, you know, up until the point when someone jerked, before they jerked it around, was very good. The reality about an ACL is if you have, so if you have good hamstring strength, the hamstrings can function very much like an ACL. So there's a lot of elite soccer players who have completely blown ACLs, but they still do their activity. The, the, the ACL is meant to prevent laxity uh, in the two bones. And, and if you have good musculature um, that prevents that laxity, 
um, especially the hamstring strength, then the long-term prognosis can be very, very good. It just really depends on, you know, it's hard for me to tell you exactly what your prognosis is because I don't, I can't feel your knee. I can't feel if it's, if it's lax right now or what's going on, but um, you know, the, the reality is a lot of people have completely torn ACLs and, and they're just fine. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Thanks, Frank. Appreciate that. And if you want to follow up at all or have a uh, further conversation, info at pinpointhealth.ca or one 855 doctor Lou D-R-L-O-U. It's weird, you know, it's funny. You got started on lower backs and then ACLs and knees. It seems to be, I mean, people are going to have problems anywhere in their body, but it seems to be this this consistent laundry list of joints and parts of the body that seem to to get a lot of injury and a lot of phone calls, and it's the backs and the knees and, and the shoulders, you know, and and all that stuff. It's it's. I find it interesting, yeah. though. I mean, people have a, you know other conditions, of course, but I guess that's why you focus so much on that, right? Yeah, I mean, I try to you know focus on what I think the majority of listeners are dealing with. And again, when you look at say the statistics, and one of the stats I threw at the beginning of the show was that eighty percent of the population has back pain at any given time. That means 80% of the listenership right now is probably in some level of back pain. Now, that doesn't mean that it's 80% have debilitating back pain, but it's back pain, whether that's mm-hmm. something that's a daily soreness that you're dealing with or something that's a little bit more chronic issues or a new issue. Back pain happens, and, and that's just the reality of it. And then, yeah, of course, when you look at other joints, um, the knees, the shoulders, the neck, these are all things that, you know, t- we don't get a lot of phone calls of like, you know, my pinky hurts or, you know what I mean? Like right. there's just some things that are more common than others, um, just probably based on how important they are to our day-to-day functioning use, right? Like we can, we can imagine like the backbone, the back is, is, is pretty essential. It's what keeps us uh, standing upright. And so that muscular turn, all those things is really, really important. The leg issues. I mean, we've had a lot, another big area that, you know, is so difficult to treat and mainly because of how often it gets used the feet, right? Like I've given the example before, like if you're dealing with say something like plantar fasciitis, um, you know, if you had a hand problem and you had some soreness, I could tell you rest for three days, four days, try not to overdo it with your hand. And most people could manage, right? You'd figure it out. Good luck trying to say that for plantar fasciitis, right? Like, hey, for three or four days, I'd like you to be very, you know, take it easy on your foot. How do you even do that, right? How, how do you eliminate someone from using their foot? Now, there are ways that we can eliminate, you know, the springiness in the foot and to help in, the, in that way. But it's just the very nature of that body part of that area of the body gets used because our legs are essentially something that we're using all the time when we're moving around. Should you have that function? The number 416-870-6400, 416-870-6400 is the, uh, the way to call in if you have some physical issues or otherwise. That's why we want to talk to you here uh, this afternoon for sure. And uh, like you mentioned, I mean, we haven't had a whole lot out there now. It's, it's, you know, it's damn cold, but we haven't had a whole ton of snow. So, And again, that whole lower back thing, I think a lot of it's posture and people forgetting how to actually use something as basic as a snow shovel, and that's getting people into trouble. And I think, you know, you've mentioned before, you know, Dr. Lewis, it's one thing, it's like, oh, I hurt my back shoveling snow, but a couple of days, you know, and I was, I was back on my feet, I had no problem, but, and then it might come back in a few days. You, you really got to be cognizant of that moving forward, that it doesn't become a, uh, a chronic issue. I want to ask you that in just a bit and get your, your comments on it, but the phone calls are always the, uh, the priority here. Irene, thank you for, uh, for taking the time to call in. How are you? I'm just fine, thank you. Great. What's your concern? My concern is... Last week, about a week, uh, actually a week today, it was in the evening at nighttime, and I went to turn, I was, I'm a night sleeper on the side, went to turn on the other side, and the back of my head, and my joints from the neck, it it's like it, you know when you get that crank, like your crack, this was like a snap. And I was like, right. oh my God, what happened here? So I was so, so afraid to get up, but I thought I had to. So I got up, Mm -hmm. and I turned my head, and it was fine. I went up and down, side to side, and I was fine. Never had that happen to me before. And I did talk to my family doctor. He he confirmed. He said, that happens. Don't worry about it. Do you have any, uh, like, pins and needles? No. Do you have nausea? No. So we ruled that out. 
but it's still it's okay. still a little bit sore in the back of my neck. It's still sore. What yeah. caused the snap? He said it was bone on bone. Yeah, potentially. That's an assumption. It could be bone on bone. It could be a tendon on a bone. It could be a ligament on a bone. It could be a combination of things. What caused the snap um, is sort of like, well, what's the diagnosis? That goes back to, again, this overarching theme that we keep coming back to. And so, you know, my first, first off, let me ask you a few questions. So it's good that you don't have any of those concerning symptoms like your doctor asked you. Do you mind sharing how old you are, Irene? Um, don't like to. I'm not there anymore. Okay. I'm not there in a big number. Okay. And, and is there any concern with osteoporosis or anything like that with bone density issues? No. Um, no? I'm very active. I'm a, a gym person. Not right now. Because, okay, good. But I'm very yeah. active. Uh, no medication. Um, right. On natural stuff. Uh, so I'm not on, on no meds. Okay, good. Um, so that's good. So, I mean... It sounds like everything is probably, you know, it, like I would tend to agree with, with your doctor. I would still say, though, you probably spoke to your doctor when, soon after this happened? Correct. Yeah, I, I, it wouldn't probably be a bad idea to, to give them a call and just follow up and let them know that you're still having some residual um, issues. And, and maybe they might feel like something like, you know, the most concerning thing with that type of noise is the idea of, of some type of a fracture. Now, I'm not saying that to scare you because the reality is that it's very unlikely for that to happen, like very, very slim chance. Um, so the, the, the best way to rule that out to be 100% certain is an x-ray. Um, you know, and that, that really, if you're still having some issue, I think it's probably just residual muscle soreness and things like that. But, you know, it might not be a bad idea to just call your doctor again and, and keep them in the loop on what's going on. Irene, appreciate the call, and best of luck. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll take a short pause here. you still got lots of time to call the show, 416-870-6400. Pinpoint Health Show, Global News Radio. 1138, welcome back to it. Pinpoint Health Show, Dr. Lou, at your service. Phone calls, 416-870-6400. That is the way. Hi, Ann. Thank you for uh, thank you for standing by. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Excellent. What's on your mind? Um, so back in July last year, I had a traverse myelitis attack on my spine uh, due to a lesion that they found. Um, now, I've never been previously diagnosed with um, um, MS before, and I was diagnosed with MS, but they were more worried about the traverse myelitis than the MS at that point. Um, I spent about a month and a half in hospital. I went back home. I now, uh, I would say, almost fully recovered. Um, but all of a sudden, I'm having some severe um, back pain again and a lot of numbing and um, weakness on my legs again. I'm just curious to know, could it be um, another attack for the traverse myelitis once again, or could it possibly be just the healing process for the nerves? Yeah. Can, can I just make sure that I understood something? So I did understand you were diagnosed with the transverse myelitis, which is a concern that's inflammation of the spinal cord, but you've also been diagnosed with MS, is that right? Correct, yes. Uh, once I was yes. diagnosed with uh, myelitis, they stated that it could be a connection as to being a flare-up of MS. So yeah, the yeah. lesions found in the spine, so they went on to do MRIs and, and they did uh, diagnose me with MS as well at that point. Now I'm in my mid-40s yeah, yeah. and it's the first time being diagnosed with this. Right, right. Um, did they give you, like, is it, uh, did they tell you the type of MS or not yet? Uh, yes, remittance. Okay, good. Yeah, so, so I mean, one of the things that is common, it, to me, again, this, I would see your, your neurologist that you're dealing with, um, but one of the things that's common with multiple sclerosis is these reoccurring attacks, and some of those attacks are in the form of, you know, different types of pain, like back pain, and then numbness and tingling in the legs and things like that. It really depends on where those demyelinating lesions are, which are the things that are characteristic in MS. Um, so it might very well be uh, something to do with that. Now, we, we see a lot of people that have MS, not, not to treat the MS, but to treat the, you know, a lot of different disease processes out there. And MS is an example of this. 
um, have a, a pain component of it. So, you know, we can treat some of the symptoms at the clinic level and things like that. That doesn't, again, uh, do anything for the treatment specifically of the MS, but it can help with some of the symptoms. So I, I, it sounds like it may be related to the overall diagnosis, which, you know, all of it seems to be related. So I, I would follow up definitely with, is this relatively new, this diagnosis for you? Yes, it was. Uh, my first attack was in July when I spent a month and a half in hospital. Right. Yeah. So, so th this is yeah. So this might be, um, you know, because it takes uh, some time to sort of get used to what the whole disease process is and and sort of the different uh, reoccurring uh, attacks that can happen and things like that. But yeah, it sounds like it could be related to that, and you'd have to sort of. But that doesn't mean that in the meantime you can't get it looked at. It's just it's really important that you share with whomever you see that you have that diagnosis so that there's a difference between trying to, you know, fix something and manage something. And, and the, the reality with what you have going on with that type of ache and pain and numbness and tingling as it relates to potentially MS, a lot of it is more management than it is actually taking it away completely. Okay, so it wouldn't be another myelitis attack in, in particular? Well, I, I can't say that for sure, right? I, I have not seen you in, in person, haven't done any testing. Um, you, you, this is why I'm saying you should really speak with whomever the doctors are um, to make sure, right? Like it, it, if you have this going on and transverse myelitis does often uh, come along with MS, so you've got to make sure um, that it, it isn't that. I, I can't say that based on, on a quick conversation over the radio. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, Ann. Appreciate the uh, appreciate the call, and uh, for you to call in as well. You still got uh, got time. There's still uh, there's still time to go here. Four one six eight seven zero sixty four hundred info at pinpointhealth.ca. That's the email address. And uh, pinpointhealth.ca, by the way, is the website. Anytime you want to drop by there, uh, Dr. Lou, the clinics are open. You're always expanding, always looking for new places to go to help people out, but. A reminder as well that uh, you can seek your advice and um, and your care because the clinics are open helping people. People sometimes forget that in this uh, this part of the pandemic. They think everything is shut down solid, but that is not the case. So uh, so there you go. Where do you want to yeah. take it, pal? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's a, what you just brought up is something that I keep reiterating week to week, and I think it's important for me to reiterate it again. Um, you know, health care is not shut down. Uh, health care is, is happening um, you know, there are some things that have been pushed and things like that, but in general, um, your health care should still be your concern. Um, and if you've got things going on, one of the things that I've noticed for sure, um, and especially when we consider, say, the listenership of, you know, global news is, is going to be, you know, people that are not not slightly older and things. I have mm -hmm. seen people being more reserved in terms of, of wanting to seek out health care appointments and things like that. And you know, again, I think caution is important, but I also don't think, you know, that you shouldn't go see someone. So, you know, the call we just had is sort of a really good example when I what, what I was saying, when you're assuming that everything is fine, and we just heard that sometimes things like low back pain can be, and I started the show by saying this, that sometimes in very rare cases, it might be to, due to things like MS, and in this case, we were talking about MS and transverse uh, myelitis, which are, are similar, um, but that that really is the reality of why you need a professional, right? And 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 I'm just using that one example, but it's really important that you get assessed by professionals and to make sure that there's nothing more serious going on. And even if it's not serious, that doesn't mean it's not important because pain and injury can definitely affect the quality of our lives. And and when it affects the quality of our lives, it can in turn have a big impact on, on what we want out of life, right? And so, you know, and in some cases, I've given some extreme examples where quantity of life may also come into question, right? Where, where if you're not taking care of yourself and you're losing mobility and things like that uh, because you're afraid to seek healthcare appointments, your, your cardiovascular health might, might be in question at that point. So it could be a chain of events. Let's take a short break, pal. we got uh, still some minutes left. That is for you to call in and ask uh, your questions. Don't hesitate. At least start with a phone call here. And then if you want to carry on afterwards with Dr. Lou and his team, I advise you, uh, you do so. But here and now for the next few, it's 416-870-6400. Pinpoint Health Show rolls on on Global News Radio. Welcome back. 1149. Still have some minutes, so let's get right to it. 416-870-6400. Sasha, thank you for uh, hanging on the line. Good morning. Hey. How are you? Good. How are you? 
Great. What's uh, what's on your mind? Uh, I've been diagnosed with PMR about two years ago, and then I did the course of prednisone, which was horrible, and I decided to go off the prednisone um, with my doctor's advice, of course. But my question is, is this something that's ever going to leave my system? Because now I'm suffering from extreme uh, stiffness, sometimes swollen joints, and I'm like at my wit's end. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, so let's start with just for listeners, uh, just because I like to use these things as educational things. PMR is polymyalgia rheumatica. It's an inflammatory condition related to um, autoimmune problems. So when your immune system, for whatever reason, becomes overactive and attacks your joints, it's characteristic with, you know, shoulder, neck pain, and then hip hip and low back pain. Um, and it, typically the diagnosis is... Uh, is high uh, ESR levels, which is a is an inflammatory marker. Um, the prednisone is the first line of defense, like any corticosteroid um, is going to be the best way to treat inflammation. Uh, in terms of does it ever go away? I mean, a lot of these inflam- inflammatory conditions are self-limiting over time. The concern with them is as the inflam. So. The, the problem with them is that the inflammation destroys joints. And as the joints destroy, they become extremely arthritic. And as they become arthritic, they the, the mobility is limited. So will the pain overall over time likely get better? I would say generally the answer could be yes. Now, it very much depends uh, on a lot of different things. And I don't know enough about your past history. Uh, but the one thing that often becomes a, a, a growing concern as any inflammatory musculoskeletal condition goes on is the the stiffness that happens as a result of the arthritic changes um so i I, I, have you seen yeah have you seen a rheumatologist i did and that was a disaster because she was just um didn't even you know touch me to diagnose her or feel any anything on my body she just looked at me gave me a prescription for prednisone and sent me on my way. And then that was it. And yeah. basically my last appointment with her was, um, I can't help you go to pain management clinic. And I'm like, are you kidding me? And I'm not that, I'm only, I'm 55 years um, young and I've been so active in my life. And I was diagnosed with yeah. this when I turned 50. Yeah, that's actually quite young for the diagnosis of PMR. It's, it is definitely much more common as you get older. So you did get diagnosed with a young um, you know, I, I, I think, you know, one thing that I always tell people, if you're unhappy with the specialist that you saw, just speak to your family doctor and get another opinion from someone else. Like the reality is, you know, sometimes the problem is the healthcare system is so backlogged that, you know, I think most doctors have good intentions. They, it's just, they never have enough time to communicate it. Um, and so I think, you know, the prednisone is sort of the, the thing that needs to be done. There's not a heck of a lot of other stuff. Like when you look at this type of stuff, you've got medication, then you've got injections and things like that, like would be available at pain clinics. And then you've got conservative therapy, like physio, chiro, and that type of stuff. Typically, in my experience, when people have these types of things going on, it's a combination of all at different points. Um, And so it's not a simple answer as to here's one thing that you can do, and everything will be okay. It's multifactorial. Um, And so, you know, I would... Does your clinic treat this disorder? Well, yeah, we can definitely help manage some of the issue. I'll have someone call you on Monday and we can set up an assessment yeah, and please, see if we can come helpful. up with a, a, a game plan. But, yeah, it's it's definitely a multifactorial approach. Yes, I definitely would be interested. Okay, I'll have someone call you. Thank you. No problem. Thanks, Tasha. Appreciate that. And uh, you want to uh, call Dr. Lou, by the way, I'll give you his number. It's one eight five 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 doctor Lou D R L O U and info at pinpointhealth.ca. Still got some time, pal. Uh, what do you want to cover off? I think before the phone call, we were going down a road, yeah? Yeah, and I think the road was the thing that I keep saying. I sound like a broken record week after week after week. But don't like for ever, anybody listening. This isn't this isn't something where it's supposed to be like a business promotion that I'm wanting you to come to Pinpoint Health or anything like that. This is really me as a healthcare professional trying to you know spread. I have a platform and I'm trying to spread a message, and that that message really is you know just don't put your health care on hold. Don't, you know, we've got this horrible virus um, that can cause some very serious disease and you should be concerned about that. But at the same time, it hasn't eliminated the other things that are consistently posing risks to our health. 
Um, and there's a lot of things that can go wrong. And so, you know, the, the idea that you're not getting your regular routine visits and things like that is potentially a scary thing because we know early detection is key for a lot of uh, disease processes. Uh, and, and so that's really important. We, we know that it's important to get the, you know, the yearly physical or the biannual. It depends. It really depends on where you are in, in your age bracket and your overall health. But, you know, I've heard too many people being afraid to go to any health care appointments. And that's and that's all the way from things like, you know, foot care appointments, all the way to the teeth, all the way to whatever it may be. I really don't think you that you should be putting those things on hold, um, you, you know, and, and at the very least, if you're concerned about going in, maybe it could be a phone call or a video conference or whatever. Uh, but, you know, you you can find ways that you can still have conversations. And I think any good professional, if they think that they really need to see you, is going to suggest that you should go in. And I think any good professional and mainly because you know we're tied to sort of rules with our regulatory bodies um hygiene is really important to us to any healthcare professional even before covid um the reality is most of the clinics uh, you know i can't speak for everyone but I, I would say that i would i would generally feel safe i've gone to my other healthcare appointments um you know and and i've always felt safe i've never felt that i've been at risk i have a mom who has um other comorbidities and as at risk, but at the same time, I haven't put her health care on hold. So when she needs to go to her family, like there was an example where there was something that happened and I said, you know, call your family doctor and this one could just probably be done over the phone so you won't have to worry about going in. So there are ways to navigate this, right, to still get the care that you need to get to make sure that everything's okay. And that's sort of my public service announcement that I keep doing week to week because I think it's really important. I think there's been a bit of a misservice by the government in terms of not making making this more clear like you should not be putting other aspects of your health on hold um, because some things just can't wait uh, and I and I can remember horror stories like at the beginning I remember on this very show someone called in and it was like two weeks into the pandemic and it sounded like they were probably in, in the midst of a stroke uh, and they thought hospitals were closed now I don't think anyone has that perception anymore but maybe people have the perception of and I've heard this even more recently oh I don't want to go to a hospital because I'm scared there's COVID there like if if you, there's something at risk for you and, and and you think you should go to a hospital or someone has recommended it like you've called telehealth or whatever uh, paramedics have come and recommended it you should probably do it especially if a healthcare professional is recommending it um it, it's really really important and i don't think uh that you know these things should just be thrown off to the side it's it's really really critical and it can be the difference between life and death unfortunately in in all too many circumstances that i've heard it's a good way to wrap it up for the night uh, for the day rather and you want to reach out to dr lou now you can do so anytime for that matter one 855 dr lou d-r-l-o-u that is how you do that it's info at pinpointhealth.ca. The website is simply pinpointhealth.ca. Find a clinic near you. And there's uh, lots more information on there as well. And you can catch the Lou Down, the long-form podcast that Dr. Lou has been doing for quite some time. They're really cool. And uh, you can get that wherever you find your favorite podcast. We'll catch you next time right here, Pinpoint Health Show, Global News Radio. The preceding program is a specialty program. Unless otherwise identified, the participants on the program are not employees of Chorus Entertainment. Opinions expressed may not necessarily reflect the views and policies of Global News Radio 640 Toronto.